The Glorious Church is a reflection of God's beauty, character and nature. The Glorious Church is God's workmanship, created for good works, light for a dark world and salt for the earth. The Glorious Church must be pure and impactful, for it is the only institution mandated to bring life and hope to the nations. Plug in to the annual theme of the Church of Pentacles for 2020, a glorious church to possess the nations. Come, let us drink deep from the word through which we are being cleansed and washed to become a radiant church. Welcome to Pentacles R, God's timely word for our dying world. Men of every bed for an answer, Jesus gave the key. And alone, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. How to reach, how to reach the masses. Men of every bed for an answer, Jesus gave the key. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 to 9. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses. 
and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread. There is no water. And we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent the normal snakes among them. They bite the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and leave. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. Please, I repeat verse 9. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. Amen. Speak to me, Lord, speak, that I may hear your servant's ways upon you, longing for you to show me your ways that bring me eternal. shall be like a vessel of honor prepared for every good way. If I daily keep your ways. If I daily keep your ways. And I am obedient to you. I shall be like a vessel of To me, Lord, speak to me in Christ. I am looking unto Christ, fullness of God, yeah. in bodily form, perfection manifest in Christ. If I I'm speaking on the topic, there is still hope in Christ. Amen. So wherever you are, I want you to join us. And I want to tell you that there is still hope in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Our first reading has been read to you already. And that was from Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 through to 9. And the second reading is taken from John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. John chapter 3, 
verses 14 and 15. I'm reading from the New International Version. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Amen. Say amen. amen. Just as Moses lifted the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, and that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. There is still life or there is still hope in Christ. Amen. There is still hope in Christ. The Lord delivered the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt and then sent them to Canaan. Israel's journey from Egypt to Canaan had many, many challenges. And um, it is just like people who live through life's journey on earth here till go to the glory. In other words, when we live on earth here, we go through many challenges. And as we go through these challenges, we learn lessons from them. So if we try to discuss how Israel left Egypt and then went to Canaan, we have many lessons that we can actually draw from their journey. And I want us to pick one of the encounters that they had and discuss it with you this morning. When Israel suffered in the wilderness to Canaan, when they actually got closer to Canaan, they needed to pass through a town that was called Edom, or a nation that was called Edom. And the Edomites come from Esau. So if you want to examine it, you realize that Edomites are the friends of the Israelites because Jacob was a brother to Esau. Esau was the elderly person. So when Moses and his team went to the border of Edom, he sent delegation to go and see the king of Edom. That, please, your brother, the Israelites, are crossing to Canaan. So I would like you to assist us by allowing us to pass through Edom. You will not eat your food. You will not drink your water. And if you eat your food and drink your water too, you will pay for it. Just allow us to go through this uh, wilderness experience through your own country. When the king heard of it, he and his generals met and said that no, we will not allow you to go through our country. When Moses heard of it, he was surprised and worried. So he sent another delegation and said, please, I plead with you. As I have said, we will pay for every food we eat. We will pay for every water we drink. We will not allow our animals to disturb you. Just allow us. And he said that, didn't you hear what I said? If you come on us, I will just allay my army and we will fight against you. And then he organized his army. So Moses stopped and he said that we wouldn't go through Edom. But by not going through Edom, it meant that they had to go through a longer journey. Already the people were tired and they were frustrated. So when they started going through the borders of Edom, the people were worried and said that, oh, what is happening? And that is where their predicament started. They were very, very frustrated and started to speak against God and Moses. So when they spoke against God and Moses, the Lord was angry. And this time, he allows snakes, poisonous snakes, to come and destroy them in the desert. You see, it's very, very worrying when the Lord allowed the snakes to come and bite them. And then the one who was bitten by the snake was leading to death. So when the people realized that they were dying and the snakes were biting them, 
Then they went back to Moses and said that, Moses, we have sinned against God and against you. So please plead to the Lord to forgive us. And when Moses prayed, the Lord said that, well, I'm going to give you a solution. The solution is that I want you to make a brazen serpent and then hang it on a pole so that whoever looks at it will live. So you only have to be obedient and look at it and live. Now, this is the story that I want us to draw some lessons from them. Five cardinal points within the story that I would like us to draw lessons from. Don't forget that we are speaking on the topic, there is still hope in Christ. Amen. Now, if you examine the story well, the people were very, very worried. And the first point that I want us to draw is to find out the cause of the frustration that they were encountering. They were worried, frustrated. So they started to speak. They started to accuse God. And they started to accuse their leader, Moses. What was the cause of their trouble? I want you to think about it. Why were they speaking against the Lord and against Moses? What was the cause? I would like you to answer this one. So you can tell your neighbor, if you are listening to this message with a friend, with your wife, with your husband, you tell your husband your answer. And then when I, I say it, uh, then you try to find out the one who got it right. Uh, so those people who are here, what is the answer? What do you think was the remote cause of the trouble that they were having, the frustration? What do you think? Can somebody guess? From, mm -hmm. from verse 5, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. people were complaining that mm -hmm. they had nothing to eat mm -hmm. nor water to mm -hmm. drink yeah. and that they are even about to die mm -hmm. in that place. And so the stress that they were going through caused them to complain. Yeah. So the stress that they were going through. Thank you very much. Thank you. And what was the cause of the stress? Their problem. Can another person try so that then I end it there? They spoke against God they, and Moses. They spoke against God and Moses. All right, now I say tell your neighbor if you have not been able to <laughs> say yours. At home, wherever you are. You see, the whole thing started because the Edomites, the people of Edom, did not allow them to pass through their country. And why did they fail to allow them? They did that because of mistrust. They did not believe that the Israelites would pass through peacefully. You know, and because they did not believe them, they had to stop them. You see, most of the challenges and the problems that we are encountering in the world here is because of mistrust. They are all human-made problems and challenges. Human-made problems and challenges. If they had allowed them, there wouldn't have been that frustration. But because they failed, they are worried. You know, human beings do not trust one another. Nations do not trust one another another. That is why we have to grow up our own military, form our military, and then allow them to go and attack. Why do we have various militaries? We train them to kill so that when an enemy is coming, the military will be able to defend us. And when they go for training, they are trained to, to, to know how to shoot and kill people. The enemy. We do not trust one another. So you see one nation rising up and attacking another nation. And that is why we've manufactured guns, bombs, atomic bombs, nuclear weapons, hydrogen bombs. We've created all these things, manufactured them, and they are deadly. You know, United Nations is trying to stop them. But people are still manufacturing weapons. You know, when they... Uh, uh, manufactured guns, they thought that no, they wouldn't go far. So we needed bombs. Bombs can destroy. And when I, I, I made a research, I realized that one hydrogen bomb can destroy uh, people as far as to about 400 meters. So in Ghana here, it's like going from Accra to Kintampo. One bomb will be able to destroy the people who are there. Human made. 
And then after manufacturing these things, they thought that we are spending too much money. No, manufacturing air force. Their work is to destroy through the air. We are wasting money. Then why can't we also discover biological weapons using chemicals to create weapons that can kill people? Now, if we examine this coronavirus that has come about, Chinese are accusing US, and the Americans too are accusing them. Does that mean that they know that they can destroy people through biological weapons? Most of the challenges we are experiencing on Earth here is human-made. We are creating our own problems. Look at the death on our roads in Ghana here. Carelessness. Our own roads. We are killing ourselves. We are afraid of coronavirus. But look at the number of deaths. Environmental pollution. Look at this issue of Galamse that the government is trying to arrest it. Look at what is happening. People don't understand. And they keep on accusing their leader. So most of the problems are human made. And unless we come to our senses at times and then do the right thing as we are expected to do, all these things will continue to destroy us. It is my prayer that we would understand God and be obedient to God and to our leaders so that we will not create more problems for us. May the Lord God Almighty have mercy on us. Amen. The second point that I want us to draw from the story is the response from the Israelites. You know, their fellow um, human beings, the Edomites, their own brothers, mistrusted them. And they also mistrusted them. And, and, and that is the issue. If you are not careful, you become afraid of one another. And when this thing happened and they suffered, they began to accuse God and their own leader, Moses. So what was happening was that um, there was what we call resentment, complaining, accusing God and accusing one another. Resentment is something that is very serious. It destroys people. You know, harboring bitterness within you. Bitterness. The chairman of the Church of Pentecost has been speaking about bitterness. These people were bitter. They were worried and started accusing God. And if you examine the content of their accusation, it was serious. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the desert? You know, there is no bread. There is no water. And we detest this miserable food. We are fed up with this useless food. This is what they were trying to say. Why have you brought us up from Egypt? Most of them were young people. The older generation had passed away. So why were they saying that, why have you taken us out of Egypt? That means they picked the evils of the older generation and they repeated it. Sometimes we fail to learn lessons from the past. We failed. And if we fail to draw lessons from the past, we will continue to suffer. Their fathers and their forefathers erred. They sinned against God and spoke against him. And as such, they suffered and Almost all of them die except two. That is Caleb and Joshua. These people were not there. They were the younger generation. Yet, they were repeating the mistake, the mistakes of the past. Do not repeat the mistake of the past. Try to arrange yourself in such a way that you will be an obedient son, obedient daughter, obedient child of the Almighty One. The Lord loves you. And the Lord always wants to prepare you, and he wants your best. You know, he doesn't want to destroy you. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to live a long life. But if you do not listen to him, then because of the just nature of God, he is a God of justice, the God of justice, he would have to bring in some sort of judgment. So they were repeating the mistake of the past. And look at it. There is no bread. Meanwhile, God was giving them bread from heaven. 
And they were saying that we are, we are fed up with that. It's a useless food. We don't like it. There is no water. And God was giving them water even from the rock. He had just given them water from the rock. He had just given them victory over the Arats. One of the Canaanites king had stood against them. And the Lord had led them to conquer this king. But they had forgotten about that. And they started accusing God. When there is an outbreak like we are experiencing now, pandemic, sufferings, disaster, we begin to accuse God. We begin to forget all of his goodness. We begin to forget his mighty hand upon us. So by doing that, they had rejected the God who had delivered them. By saying these things, they did not trust that God was going to take them. So they said that we are going to die in the desert. We are going to die. Meanwhile, the Lord had led them to conquer the enemies. So whenever you are going through challenges, do not panic. Try to remind yourself of the God you serve. Try to remind yourself some of the Bible passages that you've read. Try to remind yourself with the songs that we sing and encourage yourself and still believe that there is hope Amen. in Christ. Amen. And that Christ is still powerful and that Jesus is very, very real. And begin to appreciate the goodness and mercies of God. These people forgot all of these things and started accusing God. People who demonstrated that they were very ungrateful to God for what he was doing to that. Meanwhile, they had done that, and the Lord had forgiven them. You see, we read Numbers chapter 21. In Numbers chapter 20, they spoke worse things, and God forgave them. He forgave them, and they repeated the same thing. So God had to respond, and that is the third point that I want you to observe. The response by the Lord. When they did that, because he's a God of justice, he had to execute judgment. The judgment was that he allowed poisonous snakes to come and devour them. The truth is that there were dangerous and poisonous snakes in the desert. But the mercies of God and the provision of God was preventing these snakes from attacking them. There were dangerous animals in the desert, but the mercies of God was preventing these dangerous animals to come and destroy them. So when they did that, the Lord only had to allow the snakes to come and devour them, destroy them. May the Lord have mercy on us. Amen. And when it came like that, they were just dying. They were dying. You see, God continues to forgive us. We, as we even commit sin against him and against one another, his mercies, he continues to extend his mercies to us, the world. We have been doing many things against the, the creator of the universe. And he forgives. But when it comes to a certain point, then he allows some of nature's disasters to come so that at least you know that hey, there is a creator. There are some things that scientists cannot solve. There are some things that our human minds cannot solve. So when it comes to this condition and we appeal to him, then he will still exhibit his love. Yes. He will still show yes. his power yes. and let us know that indeed there is a creator. Yes. So when they did that, he had to allow the uh, snakes to destroy them. But they did something that is very important. And I want you to take notice of that. And that is the fourth one. When the Lord responded through his judgment, they came to themselves and then repented of what they had done. That is, acknowledging their wrongdoing. They really, that is the fourth point. They acknowledge their own wrongdoing. They said, no, we've sinned. 
So quickly, some of them moved to Moses. They said, oh, we've sinned by complaining and by accusing God and you. Please, may you appeal to God to forgive us. When there is a disaster, when people are going wrong and they do not know what to do, and when there is an outbreak like this, we need to appeal to the Almighty One. He has the power to forgive. He has the power to arrest the situation. So when they sinned, they came to Moses, please pray to God and ask him to forgive us. One of the things that destroy nations and communities is unrepentant hearts. When people sin and they continue to live in sin, when people do something that is wrong and they do not acknowledge that what they have done is wrong, sin continues to prevail. Disaster continue to prevail. But this one, they quickly repented of what they have done. If you have done something in your life that is destroying you, you need to repent. You need to confess your sin because there is still hope in Christ Jesus. And when this one happened quickly, Moses prayed to God. And when Moses prayed to God, the Lord responded. The Lord only wanted them to come back to him. He's a father who is a loving father who always wants the best for his children. So that brings us to the fifth point. The Lord took advantage of their repentance and demonstrated his mercy and grace. That's the fifth one. Taking advantage of what had happened, taking advantage of their confession and demonstrating his mercy and grace. Grace. So what the Lord did was quickly to allow Moses to make a brazen serpent and then hang it on a pole and ask the people to look at it and that those people who would look at it would be safe. I mean, it was just an act of faith. Why should the Lord make a snake? You know, snakes represent sin. In the Garden of Eden, it was snake that the devil used to deceive humanity. So God was dealing with sin. And as he was dealing with sin, he was killing, destroying the snake, striking the snake. So put the snake there, he has been destroyed. And so all our sins was put on this snake, and the snake was put on that pole. And it was an important lesson. The Lord took advantage of that and gave us a very good picture of what the Lord Jesus Christ was coming to do. But the issue was that you just look at it. And you will be safe. You will live. So if you fail to look at it, although it's for everybody, you will not have it. Because you fail to obey it. When we look at the pandemic of coronavirus, the instructions that have been given by the World Health Organization, by the President of Ghana, by the Chairman of the Church of Pentecost, Heads of Churches, uh, the Chief Iman, and many leaders of the country the, the, the instructions are very simple. Wash your hands. Just wash your hands. Use sanitizer. You see? And then separate yourself. Don't attend big gathering. All of these things are guidelines that are supposed to help us. Observe them. You should not be disobedient. Once you are disobedient, you are not going to get healed. You are not going to be protected. So take these things serious then take advantage of what has happened. Many people were using their work as an excuse to not visit home after the close of work. Now men would have to stay home and then communicate with their wives and children. So the home is going to be strengthened. Whatever happens, take it as an advantage. So take this one as an advantage to strengthen your family life. Then strengthen your own personal devotion. Many people depend upon the prayers of uh, pastors, uh, prophets, uh, bishops, apostles, and evangelists. Now strengthen yourself. There's no big gathering where people will go and dem demonstrate deliverance and healing. The Lord is your healer. Amen. Now read the Bible daily. Strengthen yourself. Listen to the word of God. Read good books, Christian books. That will strengthen you. And as you pray at home, as you fast at home, as you read the Bible at home, as you organize family devotion, you yourself are going to be strengthened. Amen. 
you are going to know God from a different perspective. Not the God of pastor, so so and so, apostle, so so and so, bishop, so so and so, but your own God. And this is what the Lord is asking you to do. So take advantage of that. Whatever happens, you just take a very good advantage of that. And then you realize that the Lord Jesus Christ also took advantage of this. When he came on earth here, and one of the Jewish leaders, a member of the, the council, the Sanhedrin, the highest council, approached him. Then he told him, as Moses lifted up that brazen serpent on, in the desert, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. And who, whoever believes in him will be saved. Hallelujah. That was very important. As Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that anyone who believes in him may have eternal life. So all was not lost. When the people of Israel sinned, God made a provision. And the provision was in Christ. You must understand that it was not the brazen serpent that healed them, but it was the power of God. And the power of God is demonstrated in Christ. So when Christ came here and died and resurrected, he was lifted up. Amen. And he, believed, he said that when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be. And I do nothing on my own but speak just what the Father has taught me. So he's expecting that we will believe in him and lift him up. So today, no matter where you are now and the degree of your sin and whatever you have done. What you need to do are two things. One, believe in Jesus. And two, lift him up. If we say that believe in Jesus, what are we trying to say? If you say believe in Jesus, you must believe Jesus to be what God says that he is. He is his son. Jesus is the son of God. You must believe in that. And then you must believe that if Jesus is the son of God, then he has got the power to forgive sin and power to save you, power to give you love, power to give you eternal life, power to heal, and power to protect. So if you are able to believe in the name of Jesus, then he's going to protect you. Amen. And he does it. I quite remember that something happened to me at Owa when I was a pastor. I was having a service under a tree in one of my villages. Then beads came around, and I had three bites. And I was worried. There was one blind lady, she also had one. So I said, Lord, why should you do this thing? You should have protected us. Then back in Kumasi, when I was also a pastor, I was conducting a funeral service. And then bees came and started biting people. I said, Lord, I'm going to officiate wedding tomorrow. The other day, I had three. Today, I don't want you, I don't want you to allow the bees to bite me because I would like to go and officiate the wedding peacefully and with a nice face, not with a face that had been beaten by bees. And I tell you, once I pray that, the bees attack some people, they never attacked me. And I said, oh, so the other day, I should have prayed because I didn't pray, they had the opportunity to disturb me. So now you have the opportunity to pray to Jesus. God has given him to, him to us and he's powerful. So once you pray to him, he will protect you. Trust him. He can do it. If you are already bitten, don't, don't forget that he has still got the power to save you. Power to heal. Because if you look at him, if you trust him, if you pray to him too, he is going to deliver you. Amen. And he is going to heal you. Amen. So beloved, if you say lift up Jesus, what are we trying to say? By saying lift him up, it means you have to promote him. You have to exhort him. You have to believe that he is the greatest of all and always proclaim his goodness and always rely on on him. By accepting who he is and declaring who he is, you are lifting him up. He is the only deliverer. He is the only hope of the world. So where we are now, wherever you are, I would like you to rise up because I want you to trust that Jesus can do it for you. 
I want you to believe that he is far above all things. Don't, don't put away your trust in him. He is the redeemer. He is the savior. Look up to him. And once you look up to him, he is going to save you. He is going to give you hope. He is going to give you life. He is going to heal you. And he is going to give you what you deserve at this particular moment and the days ahead of us. Don't give up yet. I'm in control. Watching over you to the end. Life may be dark. I'll be your light in your weakness. My grace prevails. Look up to me. Rely on me. Keep trusting me in all you do. Jesus, believing that what God has said about Jesus is true. He is the Son of God. And acknowledge him so. Wherever you are, I want you to believe in him right now. If you already believe in him too, know that he's watching over you to the end. He's watching over you to the end. And at this time, I would like you to commit your very self to the Almighty One. Commit yourself that the Lord will protect you. That the Lord will watch over you. That the Lord will protect you. Now begin to pray. Father God, we pray committing each individual to your mighty name. May you continue to pray. May you continue to protect even individuals. May you continue to cause individuals to be more careful and not to be negligent. May you continue to demonstrate your power. May the Shakana glory cover one another. You are far above all things and we trust that your grace will continue to take your people through. And therefore, Father God, as your people come before you, give them this hope that Jesus, your son, is powerful and he is able to do more than we do or even we ask. Her. May you fulfill this in the lives of all individuals. We trust you. Oh, yes, we believe. And we know you continue to do that. You are my great redeemer. Great redeemer, you are my God, Lord. I'm
to pray for world leaders, heads of states, World Health Organization. We come back to Ghana here. Our president is cabinet ministers, heads of churches who are making decisions for us. Shall we pray that the Lord will continue to lead these people and direct them of what to do? Shall we pray for our scientists, our doctors, and, and all hospital staff, that the Lord should protect them so that none of them contact these diseases? And shall we pray for those people who have contacted the disease already, that the Lord should heal them? Pray. Now begin to pray. Father, you are a healer. You are the redeemer. Great redeemer, our fortress. We pray that you begin to give life to our people. We begin that, Father God, you, give, you continue to give wisdom and knowledge to where the leaders who are directing us, oh God, so that at this juncture they will be able to come out with decisions that are full of your wisdom and knowledge. We pray for signs that, Father God, oh Jesus, you begin to give them knowledge and wisdom to be able to come with solutions. We also pray for all those who are sick and who are already bitten by the snakes, who are already under this uh, 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 virus. May you heal them, oh God. May you heal them, oh God. May you heal them. May you heal them, oh Jamba. May we call them after this short song, our pastor, Kwesi Ano Asante, will pray for us. At your mercy, Lord. At your mercy,
Eternal Father, we want to thank you that indeed there is hope in your son, Jesus Christ. And so when we are at our wit's end and we do not know what to do, we can run to this shelter of hope and find mercy to help in time of need. Thank you for the lessons, Lord, we have drawn from Israel's journey through the wilderness to the land of promise. And when, Father, O oh God, as a result of their sin, you raised the brazen snake. And when they looked onto that snake, they were received and remedy was preferred. Lord Jesus, we look up to you in these times, Lord, that become our source of solace and intervene on our behalf. The nations of the world are looking up to you because, Lord, solutions are hard to come by. But when we lift our eyes, our help comes from you, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Shower unto us mercy. Pour unto us grace. Sustain us in times like this. And enable us, oh God, to hold on even unto the end. We thank you for this encouraging word. We thank you for this refreshing word. Our hope indeed is in Christ. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. for joining us this morning and now receive benediction. May the one who does more than we ask or even what we can imagine be with you. May he protect you wherever you are. May he be with you in your going out and your coming in. May the one who is the shelter of the universe abide with you. Amen. And may his power be your shadow. Amen. May it encircle you Amen. so that indeed you will know that there is a creator. May it be well with your soul and your body in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Closer than a brother.